All right, so welcome back, and this is question 448, and it's called Find All Numbers Disappeared in an Array. And so for this question, we are given a nums array, and in this case, we are given an array of length 8. And so the question wants us to go through this array and find all of the missing or disappeared numbers. And so in this case, we want to consider all the numbers between 1 and n, where n is the length of the array. So we would be considering from 1 to 8 in this case. And so we see here that in this array, the values 5 and 6 are missing between the numbers 1, and 1 to 8. And so if we look through this array, we see that all of the values from 1 to 8 are here, except for 5 and 6. And that's because, well, 3 repeats twice, and then 2 repeats twice. So there's two missing values, and that happens to be 5 and 6. So if you look at a, a smaller case where we're given a range from 1 to 2, since this has a length of 2, and we see here that 1 appears, but 2 doesn't appear, and so 2 is the missing number that doesn't appear in this array. Okay, so to do this, one nice thing about Java is that although we're past like a static size array, we see here that they want us to return an array list, and so that's a bit of a hint to actually use an array list when you're not past one, and so that's immediately what I did. So I saw that hint and I took it, so we're gonna have an array list of type integer, and we'll just call it output. And we'll return that at the end of our method. Great. And so the next thing that we're going to do is use a direct access array. And this is a very popular data structure, especially for string type problems, where you want to increment whenever you see a specific character, like you saw the character A before. And so you might do something like, you know, this is your array here, and we want to do, say this is your string dot character at i. And so, and this is in a for loop, that's why we're using i. And so this would iterate and say, okay, we've seen this letter before, and we want to increment by one. And so whenever you go to the index of that letter's integer value in your array, you can see whether or not you saw that letter or not. But it's a constant time lookup uh, data structure, so it's really useful for a lot of these easy problems, so we're gonna be using that here. And so we'll create that, so it'll be an integer. We'll call this just uh, appeared. It's new int. Oh. And so this is gonna be of the same size or of the size of the nums array, plus one. And so what this is doing, and you probably can infer by the name of the, the array here, is that we're going to be iterating through this list and see for the value four, then at index four of this array, we'll increment it whenever we see it. And so by the end, all of the values here in this table will be if we took that value as the index in our array and increment it, then if we look in our array at that index, we can tell if we've seen that number or not, if the value is greater than zero. That doesn't make much sense. It will make more sense as I go. But this plus one here is so that we can consider the value eight because this is only from zero to seven, and we're not even going to consider the value at the index of zero, and so we want to consider from one to eight. In this case, it would be zero to seven, so it's just how I implemented it. And so we're going to populate this appeared array with a for loop, so for each value in our nums array, we'll loop through those values, and if, or no, we'll just increment whenever we see that value, so we take our appeared array, at the value of i, and we'll increment it. And so, say for this value four, then at appeared four, 
it'll be incremented to then one, right? And so by the end of our array for say the value three, then at the index location of three, it'll be equal to two because we incremented it twice here and here. So that means that will then appeared at the index of five will be equal to zero since we never incremented it while iterating through this array. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through the values of this appeared array and wherever it's equal to zero, we're gonna append that value to our output array list. So to do that, we'll be iterating through the length of this array plus one, once again, because we're doing it here, plus one. And then we'll check if appeared at i is equal to zero, then we'll append it to that output array. And so one little caveat that we had to handle here is that we're not considering whether or not we've seen zero or not because we're just considering one to n. And so we don't want to say, yes, we've seen zero or not. If this was zero to n, then we'll include it. But in this case, we set it to one. Great, so I think it looks okay. We'll try running it. Oh, let's see here. Nums.length, so that's just because I added brackets, but in an array, you don't need brackets. That's only if you want to see the length of a string. Let's try that again. Accepted, and let's run it. Awesome, and submit it. So this is actually a pretty optimal solution. It's uh, th only three milliseconds, and it's faster than 100%. So uh, simple solution, but it seemed to work really well. And then the memory usage is less than 88%. So it's actually, if we looked at uh, the, uh, here, it's uh, very performant. So yeah, I, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thank you.